unconditional surrender. The leaders of the Nazi party are today standing trial in Poland, as in the other capitals of Europe. Today we sit in judgment over those who caused humanity unspeakable miseries. We must be aware of our great responsibility, not only to the past, but to the future. Throughout the occupation by the Nazis of the invaded countries, a complete record has been kept of the crimes of the Nazis and the Nazi collaborationists. The names of these criminals were recorded, anticipating the day when judgment would be done. This court will decide not only whether the accused are innocent or guilty, but the extent of the crime. This court will determine what penalty the accused must pay. This, then, is the basis of judgment with which I open this session of the International Tribunal, District of Warsaw. The first accused is the former Reich Commissioner of the Western Region of Poland, Wilhelm Grimm. The accused have been provided with defense counsel and will enjoy full rights. Call the accused. Wilhelm Grimm. You are Wilhelm Grimm, born October 7th, 1890 in Berlin? Yes. You have been wounded. You may sit down. Wilhelm Grimm, you are charged with a wanton extermination of human life. You are charged with the crimes of murder, unlawful detention, degenerate atrocities, and common theft. How do you plead? Not guilty. Where is your attorney? I shall act as my own counsel. Do you know these witnesses? We will proceed. First witness, Reverend Roman Boretsky, priest of Litzbach. Please, the court, I'd like to make a brief statement before giving my testimony. I'd like to explain why I am testifying. The trial of these criminals marks a milestone in human history. It has been argued today that we, having defeated the Nazis, should show tolerance and mercy. That these men are the victims of circumstance and of history and that they enjoyed no freedom to act in accordance with the dictates of their own consciences. I'd like to relate an incident which occurred many years ago to prove that the accused acted of his own volition and that he had freedom of choice and of will. It was very early in the spring of 1919, following the end of the First World War. In our little town of Litzbach, it was market day and the first warmth of spring was in the air. There were few scars of war to be seen on the town itself, but they were there, not on the buildings, but in the hearts and faces of the mothers and wives whose men would never return, or returning were crippled, shattered. But now it was over. I had started across the square on my morning stroll, I stopped to greet my friend, the village rabbi. In the marketplace, there was the usual activity. Grouped about the wagons and stalls, the villagers and farmers discussed the politics of the day. The big question, of course, was Poland's future. I don't care who signs the Treaty of Versailles. I'll believe that Poland is free when we get back our old boundaries. Not before. The Poles are in the hands of the Lord. Not the Lord. The Germans. Good morning, Father. Good morning. Good morning, morning Father. It happened. Poland is going to be a republic. Poland is going to be a republic. I'm sorry, Father, but I believe in Poland for the Poles. It happened. It happened. Paderewski has been sent to Versailles. Paderewski will get our demands. The whole world will listen to him. Yes, they'll listen to him when he plays the piano. We are going to erect a monument to Paderewski in the center of the public square to honor our independence. 
At least let's wait until we get it. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll get independence. Who do you mean by we, Dr. Mottick? All of us, Oremsky, thanks to divine providence. Uh, and if you'll forgive me, Father, thanks also to the treaty they will write in Versailles. Can't you see how the Versailles Treaty will protect Poland? I don't believe it. What don't you believe now? I don't believe anything. What about the Germans? You blockhead. Haven't you heard? The war is over. German imperialism has been defeated forever. He's right. Why that? Yes, it is. Our German teacher, Wilhelm Grimm. I didn't expect him to return so soon. This is a surprise, Mr. Grimm. Welcome back to Litzbach. You are very generous to an enemy. The war is over. You think so? I see you've suffered a wound. A wound? That sounds like flesh and bone. In a minute, the children will come yelling and running out of school. You know, Wilhelm, your place as teacher is still open for you. Maya? Your place has not been filled there, either. Welcome back, Professor Grimm. You recognize me? After such a long time? Sure, why not? We're not babies. Four years ago, you were just a child. <laughs> now you're a young lady. What's your name? Anna Oremska. No. Father Barefsky says we are not to hate the Germans anymore. My brother doesn't hate them anymore. He's dead. saw me limping. Darling, I knew nothing about it. Why didn't you write me that you... That I'm a cripple? Isn't it enough that you know it now? Would you have waited for me if you'd known? Don't you know me better than that, Villain? Do you think you're any different to me because you've been wounded? You don't understand. Nothing's the same anymore. My love is the same to him. Isn't it peaceful here, darling? Well, at least there's no Polish hysterics about Polish independence and Polish republics and Polish peace. Have you forgotten, Wilhelm? I'm Polish, too. In three days, you'll be my wife. And then? Then you'll be German. As if it mattered. What does matter? Being your wife, more than anything. Three more days seems like forever, Maya, after all these years. I'm worried, Wilhelm. What about? Those curtains I got for the living room. Do you really like them? <laughs> yes. You couldn't have found a nicer house. It's so small and snug. On the coldest winter evenings, it'll be as warm and lovely. As, as... you are. Oh, I can't believe it's true. All those long four years you were gone, I kept praying you'd come back. Remember, Wilhelm, it was right here, at this very table that you asked me to marry. And when you were called away to the army so suddenly, all you left behind for me was hope for the future. In those days, I still believed in the future. And now you don't? Our future? I love you, Maya. You're the only human being in the world that I love. The others I hate, all of them. 
Not only these village clowns who babble idiotically in the market square. The German people, too. They lost the war, not our army. Today, the German people babble about freedom and democracy, just like the Poles. But that's the only chance any people have, Wilhelm. Without freedom, there's no future. The future lies in victory, not in freedom. The war will be continued until it's won. That's our destiny. If Germany had won, would you have come back to me? Well, if we'd won, I wouldn't have to spend the rest of my life as a country school teacher, to rot in this village. If we'd won, there'd been a German Middle Europe, a German Lebensraum from Berlin to Baghdad, a colonial emperor. I was promised a post in the Ministry of Education. We'd have lived in a big city. An official mansion with servants and cars. I'd have had position, responsibility. Bring German culture to the barbarians. And Poland? Well, Poland can benefit by German culture too, Maya. Let's go back to home. I think he's on his way over now, Maya. You've made up your mind. You're sure? Uncle Roman, I'm afraid. He's changed so inside himself. I don't know him anymore. If I were to marry him now, it would be like marrying a stranger. I can't do it. He frightens me. I don't understand it. You prefer not to see him, to have me tell him? No. You sure? Miss Margaret, in, please. Oh, there you are. I got your note. Wilhelm, I've decided to postpone our marriage. Please understand. Everything's so changed. I need time. I'm not sure of myself anymore. My sister in Warsaw is ill. She's asked me to spend a month or two with her. When I come back... You don't have to make it worse with such a lame excuse. You just don't want to burden yourself with the remnants of a man. Crippled leg. Crippled career. Why don't you say it? Why don't you admit that you're going to Warsaw to look over more eligible young men? Because it isn't true. Very sensible, Maya. No poverty-stricken school teachers for you. You were no wealthier before you went away, Wilhelm. Your accusation is untrue. And unkind. I suppose it's kind, after all the years I've waited, to walk out and leave me three days before my marriage, making me the laughing stock of the village idiots. That's what bothers me, Wilhelm. They're my people. You know I love them. If you think they're idiots, what can you think of me? I think you're a typical peasant who's decided to place her dowry on the auction block for the highest bidder. Write to me often, Maria. Every day. Goodbye, Maria. Have a good time. Thank you, Christina. Oh, stop it! Oh, um... She says. She's dumping all Limpy off the wagon. I know why, too. Why? I'll tell you why. Because he's not good enough for any Polish woman. <laughs> I think you're all terrible <laughs> making fun of him that way. Now that Miss Mari is gone, maybe there's a chance for you, Check Anna. Her <laughs> and you. Repeat what you said. Repeat what you said. All right. I said you're not good enough for any Polish woman. And I'm not the only one who thinks so. Yeah. It's true. Your own father said so and other men in the village. I'm not good enough for any Polish woman. Class dismissed.
It was a difficult decision that Maya found herself forced to make. But after three months in Warsaw, she learned that the war had left its tragic mark on everybody. Feeling grim was no exception. She wrote that she was coming back determined to go through with her marriage. But on the day of her return... I object. The accused will have an opportunity to defend himself. You've granted me the right to act as my own counsel. I object to all these old wives' tales of petty relationships as completely irrelevant. Your Honor, there were no objections until now. Evidently, it's because what I have to say is extremely relevant that the defendant wishes to stop me. Objection overruled. The witness may proceed. As I said, Maya wrote that she was determined to go ahead with her marriage. She felt that now, more than ever, Wilhelm needed her love and care. With her help, perhaps, he could readjust himself to a normal life. And that would be her job. So Maya returned to Litzbach. However, it would have been better if she had picked another day to come back to the village. What's wrong? Has anything happened to my uncle? No, there's some trouble about Jan. There's no sense continuing to deny it, Jan. It's plain to everyone that you're guilty. I'm not. What's the matter, Uncle? What's happened to you? No, it's all, it's all right, honey. Never mind. I'll explain the whole thing. Confess to the priest or I'll disown you. Maybe Father Roman will have mercy on you. I am innocent. You've disgraced me. Orebsky has been my friend and neighbor for 40 years. Confess or I'll beat the truth out of you. Please, please. We're old friends, Jan. You can talk to me. Won't you please believe me? There's nothing I can't say except that I don't know anything about it. What does Anna say? She refuses to talk to anyone. She hasn't uttered a single word in three weeks. She's like one stricken dumb. Good evening. Good evening, Martha. May I speak to Anna? Down there. I just came back from Warsaw. Aren't you going to say hello? Anna, I've known you for many years. I've always felt that we were friends. I want to help you. All right, Anna. You'll be sorry later. I know you've always loved Jan. It will be on your conscience when they punish you. They'll send him to a reform school. It'll be your fault because you refuse to confess. Your sin will be doubly shameful. Don't let them hurt Jan. Don't let them send him away. Why shouldn't they? Jan deserves the worst punishment they can give him. Why didn't he kill me? Who? I begged him to kill me. He knew I wanted to die. He could have killed me with the long pistols with silver handles. Kill me with his walking stick. Wilhelm. Wilhelm. I didn't say it. I didn't say anything.
to come back. Yes. Can those pistols be fired? Yes. Then if you have any sense of honor left, you'll use one on yourself. Why, you? What's this all about? Maya! Father Beretsky. Yes, has drowned herself in the lake. And may the Lord have mercy on your soul. The buzzards pick out your eyes from the gallows. books. She's beginning to find Warsaw an interesting place. She even mentioned a young man. A young man makes any city interesting. Uh, of course, as yet, you know, it's nothing very serious. Of course not. Just uh, interesting. <laughs> ah, life is good to young people. Even deep wounds can heal in six months' time. In the world is that? you here, Mr. Grimm. 
I've just been released from the hospital. I sought sanctuary in the house of God. I didn't expect the good fortune of finding two of his servants here. You're the only people I can turn to for help. It's your duty to help, isn't it? Not to condemn. All right, then, help me. Give me enough money so I can get across the border. Return to Germany where I can start my life over again. Here is all I have. I don't know whether it's your good fortune or bad that the court couldn't find sufficient evidence to convict you. Today, you stand before two roads. Upon one, humanity walks in brotherly love and human understanding. On the other, run wild the forces of destruction. You started on the wrong road, Grim. But it's not too late to turn back. Walk with us in the light of God. Goodbye. I'll repay you this money as soon as I can. That was in 1919. We prayed for him and hoped he would find peace and a new life. Does the defense wish to question the witness? Yes. A few moments ago, I asked that all this gossip be stricken from the record as irrelevant and immaterial. My objections were overruled. I would now like to ask the witness three questions. Proceed. Was it ever proven that I molested that young girl? Did the jury dismiss the case for lack of evidence? Is it true that I returned the money I borrowed from you and that Jew? Yes. No further questions. Thank you. Next witness. Carl Grimm. Your name is Carl Grimm? Yes, Your Honor. You are related to the accused? I am his brother. Is this witness testifying for the prosecution or the defense? That is for the court to decide. I want only to tell the truth. Proceed with your testimony. Wilhelm and I were really more than brothers. We were only 14 months apart in age, and as far back as I can remember, we were as close to each other as twins could be, in school, at the university, and all through the First War. I was beside him on the battlefield when he lost his leg. It was either to help bring him to the base hospital, and as is only right and natural, it was my blood that was used in the transfusion that saved his life. It was my life, too. In, in 1923, Germany was torn to pieces. It seemed the Republic would neither live nor die. It was a nation bewildered and angered and helpless. We of the middle class didn't know which way to turn. I hadn't seen my brother in five years. I wondered what had become of him because during all that time he had never written to me. We were living in Munich, my wife Alice, our two small children, Willi and Elsa, and I. Willi, that's only your mouth, not a tunnel. Don't stuff so much food in at one time. Eat it. Yes, Mother. You're expecting someone? No. Well, darling, see who it is. Really? See who it is, please. Good evening. Good evening. Carl? Good evening. Good evening. I didn't recognize you. Devil Forgive me, Christ my in Craig. Well, <laughs> where have you been? Oh, never mind what the questions. We're just what? having dinner. Uh, aren't you hungry? Yes, oh, bad. come! You look half starved. Come and sit down. Let me fix you something to eat. You. <laughs> you see, now I have a little laser. And uh, you remember this one, of course. Hmm? No. No, I guess he wasn't quite here yet when you left. Billy, this is your Uncle Wilhelm. Wilhelm, meet your nephew. We named him after you. <laughs> Uncle Wilhelm, <laughs> what's the matter with your eye? Billy, stop.
Stop asking questions. Sit down, Wilhelm. Conversation can wait. Mother? Yes? May I ask just one question, please? All right, just one. Uncle Wilhelm, what is the matter with your eye? Willie? Alice, please. We all want to ask the same question. I lost it many years ago in Poland. Lost it? You mean it just fell out? Billy. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it, little Lily. Well, what sort of an excuse is that? You were traveling. You still could have written, Wilhelm. Yes, for three years we've been trying to find out whether you were dead or alive. I didn't want to bother you with my troubles. Oh, Wilhelm, how could you be a bother to us? Well, Carl, what about you? Huh? Here we are, getting older. Our children are practically grown up. No, 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 I mean in general. Conditions here in Germany are so bad that... Intolerable. Oh, we've managed to survive. I've got a pretty good job writing editorials for the Munich Post. Socialist paper? Why not? Why not? <laughs> no, you've been away too long, Bill, huh? Things have changed here. But you start working again, you'll see. You must live here with us, Wilhelm, and learn how to relax again. That's very kind of you, Will. But how can I move in on your family? Our family? <laughs> What about you? Aren't you part of our family? These days, Wilhelm, there isn't much left besides one's family. You think not? I want to tell you to something. A new spirit is being born, a new religion of blood and race. And the man to lead it's already here in Munich. You mean this Hitler creature? <laughs> That's right, Carl. Laugh. You too, Alice. Everybody laughs at things they don't understand. The whole of Germany will laugh. But when they stop, It'll be too late. When they stop, he'll have taken Munich. And the whole of Germany. Well, why stop with Germany? Why not the whole world? Why not? Yes, we laughed. It all seemed so very funny to us in 1923. Hitler went into the beer hall and proclaimed himself the new leader by his own authority. But when on the next day he actually tried marching through the streets of Munich, the authorities promptly threw him and his gang into jail. It was really very amusing. After all, how could anyone take this hysterical paper hanger and his crowd of hoodlums seriously? And so we laughed. So, <laughs> you took the world, eh? Well, flowers. And caviar. Not bad for a jail. But your eye. <laughs> you told us that... <laughs> Glass. Look, look, look. Party supplies everything. <laughs> yes, so I see. Sit down. Everything except uh, freedom. Oh, don't worry. Wilhelm. Sit down. There's talk going around the city that they're going to make you serve the entire two-year sentence. Just talk. The pressure of the party will force them to release us. Uh, maybe. Look, Wilhelm. I can get you out of here right away. On the condition that you leave Munich. I wonder if you think of that proposition. He's upstairs now, writing his book. A book? <laughs> Something to change the course of world history, I'm sure. Yes. Well, fortunately, your faith isn't shared by everyone. So you won't accept my offer to let me help you out of here. Hmm. Well, I think you're crazy. But if that's the way you want it, all right. Certainly you're very comfortable here. In six months, I'll be free. Hands up. Goodbye, Bill. Good luck. Heil Hitler. Between brothers, I prefer this. <laughs> but Wilhelm was right. They were free in six months. And we felt it. All of Germany felt it. Even in those early days, the Nazi technique was apparent. Ridicule of the Republic was their political line. They created unrest, suspicion. They fostered food riots. Divide and conquer was their aim. This situation became so grave that in 1929, the authorities resolved to put a stop to it. The Weimar Republic has launched a campaign to stamp out lawlessness. At this moment, they are seeking out the ringleaders. This is a warning. Effective immediately, 
It is unlawful for any citizen to shelter any member of the Nazi party. Oh, no. Our news broadcast has ended. This is Radio Munich. Three minutes pause. There's everybody. Out, all except me. What's happening? I just heard on the radio Listen that... Listen to me carefully. The police are probably... Are they after you, too? <laughs> I think so. Yes, Carl Grimm's apartment still flights up. Thank you. They ask for me, say that I'm in Berlin. But I've been there for two weeks. But why should we lie? There's only one truth. National Socialism. Yes. Will you obey me? Yes, sir. But suppose they search the house. They won't. Not if you say the right things. I hate these places. No elevators. Your father home, Sonny? No, sir. Nobody's home. Your father walks with a limp, doesn't he? No, sir. That's my uncle Wilhelm. That's right. Wilhelm Grimm. He's not here either. He went to Berlin last week. Open the door, Sonny. Let's take a look around. No, you can't come in. You aren't allowed. Police can't search your house without a warrant. That's the law of the Weimar Republic. Isn't it? How soon will your father be home? In an hour, maybe. We'll see him then. Yes, sir. There's your Weimar Republic for you. <laughs> Even a small boy can make him run. <laughs> I call it democracy. Stupid. Good work, Billy. You've got the makings of a youth leader. Where are you going? Oh, I'll be away for about six months. See you when I get back. Buy yourself the best pair of roller skates you can find. Oh, here's something else. For luck. Keep that always. Thanks, Uncle Wilhelm. Don't say anything to your father about what happened tonight. He gets upset so easily. Bye. I won't. Goodbye, Uncle Wilhelm. Of course, Billy told me he had to explain the money somehow. I was very sentimental in those days. He was my brother. And I loved him more than I hated his politics. So within the years that followed, I tried to convince him that he was wrong. That he was rising to a position of influence in the Nazi party, and all that he could hear was the din of noisy promises made by his party's leaders, which the decent, intelligent people of Germany were not taking seriously. So that by the time they awakened to what was happening, it was 1933, it came to a point where every man with any honesty left in him, with any integrity, had to make a choice. The choice was not easy. We were born in Munich, and had lived there all of our lives. Good evening, Father. Good evening, Elsa. Why are you so late, Carl? Sit down. I'll get you supper. The children have eaten. Alice? Yes. I've quit the paper. We're leaving. Carl, what happened? I've already bought the tickets, so you better start packing. We're leaving in the morning for Vienna. Vienna? Oh, Daddy, that's a beautiful city, isn't it? I've seen pictures of it. Yes, I think you like it there, Elsa. Carl, I'm so glad. Every minute you're away from the house, I'm terrified. This morning, they took the butcher downstairs away to a concentration camp. Oh, Did you see this, Father? Good evening, Billy. Good evening. Look, Uncle Wilhelm's picture in the paper. They're going to give him a medal tonight at the Kaiserhof Hotel. Yes, we saw that. Well, let's go over and congratulate him. Billy, we'll move in tomorrow to Vienna. Vienna? <laughs> what for? Your father has a job offered him there. Does Uncle Wilhelm know? Are we even going to see him and say goodbye? Yes. I am going to see him. In view of your distinguished services to the party, as an old fighter and as bearer of the blood order, in appreciation of your unfailing loyalty to the Führer during recent months, 
in which the Führer had to perform his inexorable duty as highest judge of the nation and of the party against the traitors. In the name of the Führer, I nominate you, Party Comrade Wilhelm Grimm, SS Group Führer and Deputy Chief of the newly founded Bureau for Living Space in the Ministry of Education. Nice. I'll be with you in a minute, Arthur. All right. Well, I haven't come to congratulate you, Wilhelm. I've come to say goodbye. We're leaving tomorrow morning for Vienna. I think you'd better stay here. You look too well for a man in my position to have a political refugee in the family. I couldn't afford it. No more than I can afford a brother who's an SS leader. Why don't you come with us, Wilhelm, before you get too involved in all this? Show some courage. My record speaks for me. Your record shows only that you're afraid to break away from these murderers. Oh, shut up, you fool. Wilhelm, put the Nazi party in now. Because I promise you the first thing that I'm going to do when I get to Vienna is write a signed article about all I know of the Reichstag fire and the Schleicher murder. With your name and all the others connected with it. You leave me no choice. And you will come. In Vienna we can be free to start some kind of a new life. And whatever little money that I've been able to save, I'll share it with you. When do you leave? Tomorrow morning. Expect me tonight. My brother, <laughs> the nervous fellow. <laughs> so many people these days, it's very hard to make a choice. <laughs> Takes courage, eh? And don't worry about school, Elson. You'll go right into the same grade you were here. They have much better schools. I won't like it. <laughs> you won't like it. Not even there yet, and he knows he won't like it. I don't see why we have to move. You know what's bothering him, Carl? He wants to join the Hitler Youth. Sure, all the other fellows in school are in it. And they have all the fun. Long vacations and bicycle rides. And... Then guns and education for murder. Do you know why your Uncle Wilhelm changed his mind? Is he really coming with us? Yes, of course. Well, why did he change his mind about the party? Because he learned the truth about them. No, I don't understand. Look, William. Do you really want to know why we're moving? It's because I'm afraid. Not just for your mother and little Elsa, but for you. I feel that I have a chance to let you grow up in a place where men still live by their convictions and not just by fear. You see, there comes a time in a man's life when he has to make some great decision. And when that time comes for you, I want you to be ready for it. <laughs> Grandfather, you have. You ask for a bicycle and I give you a speech. You give him a speech and I do all the packing. <laughs> Wilhelm! Now, you see? <laughs> you finished packing before we did. <laughs> and I've got a job for you. When you get out of that silly uniform, you can begin to knock some sense in that young man's head. Captain Werner. In the name of the Third Reich, you're being taken away for indoctrination. It's for your own good. You lost your sense of duty and must be rehabilitated. To a concentration camp. He's sick. He must be made well again. All right, Wilhelm. You are afraid, but you can't kill that kind of fear. We'll answer you someday. I know we will. Take him away. Come on. Billy! Go! Remember this! Go! Always remember this, Billy! Remember Billy! There was little hope that Billy could remember. With me gone, his uncle could exert his every influence upon the boy. Six months later, my wife wrote me that Wilhelm had placed him in the Nazi youth group under his personal supervision. But during all those years in concentration camp, I knew this day would come. I knew that people all over the world would arise and demand an accounting. It was only my faith in the people that kept me alive. You wish to question the witness? No. Thank you. Call the next witness, please. Your son. You said his name was Philip. 
Do you know? My wife, my daughter, are they still alive? In September 1939, Poland was overrun. In three weeks, the war was over. Even so, for me, it was a long war. My husband was killed during the first few days of fighting. Our home in Warsaw was in ruins. And so, with my daughter Janina, I returned to Litzbach. We were determined to make the best of our situation, which was like that of thousands of others. With them, we would rebuild our lives, search among the ruins for some semblance of peace. I wanted to work again. The teacher in Litzbach had been killed, and I was needed in his place at once. Refugees. Welcome back to your old refuge. Maya, you have your old room back. It'll be big enough for the two of you. My sympathy for Maya. Try to be strong. Thank you. It was a bad war. We lost. Well, it's over now. Over. I think it's just beginning. Sit down, Maya, and rest. Uncle Roman, I've got to get Janina away from here. Far away, where she'll be safe. Lithuania, maybe. I'm not leaving you, Mother. It's natural you should feel upset, Maya. But there's really no danger. What can happen? After all, the war is over and we're civilians. Hey, you! Report in the public square at once. All of you. Of course. <laughs> uh, thank you. Hurry up! Get in line, hey! Now smile, all of you. Look happy. I want to show smiling, laughing faces. I left the name and address of every man and woman who refuses to smile. Come on, guys, get in line here. Come on, come on, look happy. Hey, out of the line, Jew. I didn't ask for food, I was forced here. Get out! Nothing you can do. Come on, get moving. You get out come of on, the Come on, smile, look happy. That's right. Come on, smile. Come on, smile more. Everybody. All right. Camera. Come on, smile, 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 smile. Come on. That's right. You. Yes. You're the parish priest. I am. Where's the Boogermaster? Uh, Dr. Mate at your service. The Reich Commissioner wants to see both of you. Follow me, please, Captain. Uh, yes, sir, we're coming. Yes, we're coming, we're coming. You think we got enough? Plenty. That's all. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Why do you keep the hammer? Oh, you go. Come on, come on,
Come in, come in. So we meet again. I want you to meet two old friends of mine, the Reverend Varetsky, Dr. Martek. Gentlemen, my nephew, Lieutenant Wilhelm Grimm. Delighted. This is a surprise, Herr Commissioner. For people who sleep all the time, waking can be a surprise. Of course. You're welcome to the use of my office. If you had consulted me, I would have offered it to you. Formalities. Mere yeah, formalities. I didn't summon you here for social purposes, gentlemen. A quote has been set for this district. As leaders of the community, you will be responsible for cooperation. This district must supply to Germany each month a certain amount of grain, beef, pork, and dairy products. My staff is working on the figures now. You will receive them within 24 hours. There'll be little you can get out of here, Herr Grimm. The war has drained us. We haven't enough for ourselves. Uh, we'll be of whatever assistance we can, Herr Grimm. After all, it's a question of business. What's the difference whether the farmers sell to us or the Germans? They'll be paid. Speaking of payment, the village of Litzbach is already indebted to the Reich for feeding the population. That's all, gentlemen. I trust you'll exert your influence on the population to see that they cooperate. That's the only way we'll get along together. Good day. Billy, you should have been with me at that bread line a minute ago. These aren't people, they are dogs. But good dogs. You can train them. Smile or no food. <laughs> Just like saying jump through the hoop or no bone. They jumped. We're lucky, Billy. We got out of school just in time. From now on, no more theory. We start making history. My quarter's prepared, Gerstow. I'll find out immediately, Herr Reich Commissioner. Did you notice the expression on the priest's face as he recognized me? But that isn't really why we're here, Uncle Wilhelm. Just on account of those people you used to know. Disappointed? Sure. The least we can do is live in the capital of the province. This is a terrible place. It's dead here. We'll move to Posen pretty soon. I have a job to do here first in this terrible place. I've always wanted to come back and show these people what happened to that poor fellow they used to know. Let's go out, Philly. There's something I want to show you. Go to your places. You can hear the music just as well from your seats. There's no need running to the window or out of the schoolhouse. Another thing. No one is to accept food from the German field kitchen. Furthermore, it is important for every boy and girl to understand... Yes? Just as I left it. A slight modification. Yes, Maya. My nephew, Lieutenant Grimm. The passing years haven't been very kind to you, Maya. And it's probably been a hard life. I've managed. You know, Billy, it was right in this room I tried to pound knowledge into the heads of little provincial idiots. The only thing they could ever learn was obedience. Yes, they knew how to obey. Class, rise! <laughs> For being such good students, I'm going to reward you. Take your books outside and burn them. New books will arrive from Germany in a couple of days. Class, dismiss. Handsome, eh? Here you see German youth in destructive Mother, what happened? My daughter, Janina. Commissioner Grimm. Lieutenant Grimm. I 
Now, your mother and I are old friends. Did I know your father? I don't know. Where do you live, Maya? At the parsonage. Now, we'll dine with you tonight. An honor. Yes, in honor of Teacher Grimm's return. I'm accustomed to eating rather well these days. I'll send my own food. Invite Dr. Martek. Until tonight, then. Oh, by the way, about Jan Stees. I'd like to see him again, too. He's such a rascal when he was a boy. Quite a marksman with stones. Jan is in the Polish army. What Polish army? Janina, go to the Stees farm right away. Tell Jan he must leave. That Wilhelm Grimm is here. But, Mother, he's so badly wounded he can't move. Tell him he must go. Good coffee, eh? Yeah, it's the best of everything. The best, and not enough of it. Haven't you expanded enough? Haven't you Lebensraum now with Austria and Czechoslovakia? And Poland. Small bites, mere yeah, bites, just appetizers. Russia? Well, there the meal begins in earnest. It might be too big a bite. Poland took us three weeks. When we're ready, Russia won't take us more than six. Thank you, I can manage. It's a pleasure to help. Oh, uh, Herr Grimm, you've never married? Mary? No. No one would want a cripple. A poverty stricken one at that. Isn't that so, Maya? <laughs> oh, but I've been rewarded in other ways. I have my nephew. He's like my own son to me. Yes, a, a very fine boy, apparently. <laughs> what do you do with yourself in this little hall of town? I teach kindergarten. <laughs> no, I mean in the evenings. Look, isn't there any, any music here? Not even a theater? Mm -hmm. Leeds Park happens to be a small village, but we have music very often. We used to. Well, I, I like the forests and lakes around here. You know, we have them at home, too, only much nicer. Homesick already, Lieutenant? <laughs> no, I should say not. You know, this war is a lot of fun. Sport. Now, don't change the subject. Look, I'm going to be around here for a while. You and I have got to see quite a lot of each other. Tell me, uh, what do you do for amusement? Well, I... I amuse myself. <laughs> it's purely a question of mathematics. Armies require so much food... Civilians must supply it. Well, that reminds me. I want a list within 24 hours of all the farmers in the district. What for? Also a list of all the men between the ages of 16 and 60. May I ask why? By the way, does anyone here know the whereabouts of Jan Stis? Uh, Jan? We are not in communication with the Polish army, Herr Grimm. <laughs> What Polish army? <laughs> Billy? It's time for us to go. Good night. I trust you enjoyed your dinner. You know, I don't think things are going to be so bad. After all, we're men of goodwill, and he sounded reasonable. I think we'll find a solution. There's only one solution. Jan! Didn't you give him my message? She did, Maya. That was for me to decide. But you shouldn't have come here. Oh, come sit down, Jan. How can you talk of solution or reason? And you? I was outside the kitchen window. I heard you. I heard you and that young Nazi. What do you do for amusement? There's only one amusement left for Poles. To kill Germans, you ask why they want lists of farmers. To bring in Germans and throw our people out, lists of men from 16 to 60 for labor camps. Poland will become a nation of slaves. Is that your idea of reasonable, Dr. Matic? You think the war is over because our army has been defeated. No. The war has just begun. If you accept defeat, you'll be alone among the Polish people. Mark this October 1939. The fight is beginning.
We've got guns and ammunition hidden in the forests and the swamps. We'll never stop. Jan, Jan, you mustn't stay here. You know he's after you. Your life is in danger. Of course. That's why we're fighting. All of us. It's dangerous. Not to. Next day, we were to learn why Grim wanted that list of names. Boys of 14, men of 60, they took them all, tore them away from their families, shipped them off in trucks to labor camps. As for our girls, their fate is well known to you. The officers called it their clubhouse. Our clothing was seized. Every house in the village, every farm throughout the countryside was looted of all food and livestock. They overlooked nothing. Good to burn these things. Future is in victory, not in freedom, so horses are more important than Jews, that's all. Have you lost all human feeling, Wilhelm? Human feeling is a luxury that vital nations can't afford. Human feeling is the last resort of decadence. What have your human feelings brought you? Well? What are you staring at? I'm trying to see one spark of pity. In which eye? The left one. <laughs> That's the glass one. I know. Come here, Maya. Look, this is interesting. I save my human feelings for my boy. I think your daughter does, too. Your life is really bound up in that boy, isn't it, Wilhelm? Completely. Yes, you know, it's an interesting story, Maya. As an educator, you could learn something from it. For 15 years, he lived with his family, my brother. He was completely corrupted. When my brother was sent to a concentration camp, I took charge of the education of the boy. Your own brother was sent to a concentration camp? He's still there. Couldn't you prevent it? Prevent it? I sent him. He was poisoning the boy. All that's been wiped out. Every vestige of the past has been blotted from his memory. In him, you see the new Germany. Indestructible. It's as if he were your own son, isn't it? He is my own son, spiritually. I feel myself reborn in him. A beautiful relationship. Cheer up. You take life too seriously. That's because you're so young. I'm not young. You take life too easily, as if it were nothing. It's shameful. I really can't understand you, Yanina. Look, we need horses, and horses need stables, so we put them in the synagogue. Anyway, those weren't people, they were Jews. Yanina, please don't go. I want to talk to you, and I want you to understand. When I was young, I felt differently like you do. And then later, I was taught that victory for the German nation is all that matters. Those people mean nothing to you or me. Nothing to you, I know, but they mean very much to me. They're my friends, my neighbors, my schoolmates. Older people I've, I've known since I was a child. Younger ones who grew up with me. Why do you treat them like animals? Worse than animals. Helena, please don't look at me that way. I don't like to see hate and contempt in your eyes. Look at me. What's wrong with me? 
Yanina. Come home, Yanina. I assure you, madam, that my... I forbid you to see my daughter again. Is that clear? No, it isn't. Why? Because you're no good. You deserted your father, didn't you? When he needed you most, too. No, it isn't true. It was my father who deserted. He was a traitor. You're the traitor. My uncle had to send my father away. It was his duty, his loyalty to National Socialism. That took strength. Your uncle is a coward. So are you. Here. Yes? Please, I must see him at once. Tomorrow, I go. No, you don't. The doctor said not for three days. The doctor. <laughs> A lot he knows about it. Something must be done. Something must be done. Dr. Mathic, I beg you to help. Use your influence. There must be someone who can reason with them. My dear rabbi, I, I don't know what to say. Take me down there. I'll talk to Grimm. But don't misunderstand me. I'll do whatever I can. What's the difference whether they're here or somewhere else? It's not geography, really. It's mathematics. There's just so much food at our disposal. There must be fewer mouths to feed. Did I say mathematics? <laughs> Simple arithmetic. Well, what's going to happen to them? There's a whole train load coming from Warsaw. They'll attach these cars to it. When? Tomorrow, maybe the next day. But without food or water? I've no doubt that some of them will manage to survive. I believe you know me, Herr Reich Commissioner. You knew him when he gave you money to escape to Germany 20 years ago. I believe that debt was repaid. Does the Jew demand interest? If mercy is interest, yes, I demand it. You must remember what mercy is. You received it from us when you were in need. I merely carry out orders. You're afraid not to carry out orders? Before God and man, I protest this crime against humanity. By all means, if it makes you feel any better. May I say a few words to my people before they're taken away? If he thinks it'll stop the noise, yes. Let him call for silent prayers. Oh, come on. Oh. Hey, you again? Yes, dog. He's going to quiet them. Let him speak. My people, be calm. Listen to me. Let us prepare ourselves to face the supreme moment in our lives. This is our last journey. It doesn't matter if it's long or short. For centuries, we have sought only peace. We have submitted to many degradations, believing that we would achieve justice through reason. We have tried to take our place honestly, decently, alongside all mankind to help make a better world, a world in which all men would live as free neighbors. We have hoped and prayed. But now we see that hope was not enough. What good has it done to submit? Submission brought us rare moments in history when we were tolerated. Tolerated! Is there any greater degradation than to be tolerated, to be permitted to exist? We have submitted too long. If we want equality and justice, we must take our place alongside all other oppressed peoples, regardless of race or religion. Their fight is ours. Ours is theirs. We haven't much time left. By our actions, we will be remembered. This is our last free choice, our moment in history. And I say to you, let us choose to fight here, now. <laughs> We will never die. It will be you. 
All of you. David, we will never die. about Uncle Roman leaving him here alone. But there's nothing we can do. We can't stay here any longer. Not after what we saw tonight. What can we do? Tomorrow night when Jan leaves, we're going to the forest with him. There'll be plenty for us to do. Good. Does it still hurt, Jan? This is no time for wounds to heal slowly. Uncle Roman went for Dr. Marty. I heard your name mentioned. You're Jan. Jan Steets. You're right, Commissioner's been looking for you. Well, take him. Take him and be proud of yourself. You've captured a helpless, wounded man. Why, you're a hero. They'll promote you, give you a medal. I'm only a soldier. A mechanical soldier run by wheels and springs. They turn a key and you jump. An officer of the right will Obeys pay... orders, I know, but you obey orders because you haven't the courage to disobey. You don't dare. It isn't a question it's of daring. It's the only question your uncle doesn't dare disobey, even though he knows he's wrong. Rabbi Levin made a choice as a free man. But you're afraid. Your father did. You speak of a master race. Men like your father are the masters. You and your uncle, the slaves. Go ahead, take him away. Take him and think of your father while taking him. Don't tell me what to do. Nobody can make me do anything I don't want to do. I make my own decisions. Sergeant, have you lost your mind? He's sick. Something wrong, Lieutenant? Why waste good German strength on an old man? If he can't work, shoot him. Come on! Get moving! That's all. I thought you'd like to know. Very strange. I can't imagine why the lieutenant should behave in such a manner. I think I know her, Reich Commissioner. Yeah? As you know, the lieutenant and I were at school together. It was often thought by many of us that he showed certain weaknesses. We thought perhaps the influence of his father. Oh, stupid. That's exactly what I told the others, Reich Commissioner. Of course it was stupid. The lieutenant was graduated with high honors. If I may make a suggestion. Yeah? In my opinion, the lieutenant sees too much of those women, the mother and daughter. He does. That girl has enjoyed special privileges. Some of the men have been wondering why. 
I think it would be more satisfactory for all concerned if she were sent to live in the officers' club. I make all the decisions here. Of course. I was merely offering a humble suggestion. A little late, aren't you? What was it, this, Herr Lieutenant? Yes, what is it? Price Commissioner Grimm wishes to see you at once. All right. Thank you. Oh, so I knew where to find you, eh? What was it, Uncle <laughs> What about dinner? I'm not hungry. Drink? Might help your appetite. No, not for me, thanks. Billy, you're not in love with that girl, are you? No. Good. Well, I can understand the attraction. She's quite a beauty. Just a child. <laughs> Billy, you know, we can make the mistake of considering these Polish women as equals. They're here to work for us and <laughs> for recreational purposes. What has this got to do with me? You know, I couldn't feel any closer to you if you were my own son. There isn't anything in the world I wouldn't do for you, will you? know that. I know that. What I've done today is for you, too. What? I sent that girl to live at the officer's club. But, but she's so young. Children grow up quickly these days. Besides, it was necessary. Some of the officers were beginning to ask why this particular girl should enjoy special privileges. You said you were doing it for me? I did. It's part of your education. As an officer of the Reich, you can have but one loyalty. Uncle Wilhelm. That, that girl, Janina. She's everything I believe in. I can't tell you how much this means to me. I can't explain. You said you'd do anything for me. Then get her out of there, please. Don't be romantic. I beg you. It's too late I've given the order. No, no, it isn't. You're in charge here. If you gave the order to put her in there, then you can give the order to get her out. I... Gensdorf! Gensdorf! Find out what that's for. Yes, sir. Special service? I don't know. What's this about? What is this? Who gave you permission to hold a special service? I need no permission. The service will not take place. Yes, it will. If my orders are disobeyed, you'll suffer the consequences. Send the people home. Gersdorf, guard the entrance. It's dangerous to tamper with the orders of the Reich. It's dangerous to tamper with the orders of God. What is it? An accident. One of the girls in the officer's club. She was shot. Guards to let them pass, eh, Graham? You're crazy. You can't go in there. You're an officer. Whatever you feel personally doesn't matter now. Think of me, Billy. Don't I mean anything to you? Do this for me. Just this one thing for me. That's all I ask. Don't go in there. I must. Why? I want to pray. I want to pray to my father to ask him to forgive me. I want to let him know that now I understand what he did. I want to be forgiven for having deserted him and my mother. For having been a traitor. You weren't, Willie. Really. That's not true. It was he. Before it's too late, Uncle Wilhelm, come with me. As an officer of the Reich, I command you, return to your quarters. Return to your quarters! Good luck.
is going to look bad on Rikers at the headquarters. Forest and Sanctum, don't steal men. Don't you tippy down the squid quit to the Christie Amen. Though Helen Grimm left Litzbach that night, and those of us who felt that such cruelty, such complete lack of human decency was peculiar to him alone, learned otherwise in the years that followed. Those who came after him may have varied their forms of torture and brutality, but they were the same. They were all Wilhelm Grimm's. They were Nazis. You didn't see him again after that? Not until today, in this courtroom. You wish to question the witness? No. Thank you. That's all. Wilhelm Grimm. Do you deny the testimony stated by the witnesses to be the truth? To deny or affirm the gossip that's been offered here as testimony would simply be to admit the authority of this court, which I refuse to do. I know this court will exercise its temporary power, but remember, it's only temporary. You have just won another battle in a fight which is not ended. We of the Nazi party are the destiny of Germany. The destiny to fight and conquer. You cannot crush us. We will rise again and again. You heard the witnesses and you heard the accused defense. Men and women of the United Nations, all of you, you are the jury. It will be up to you to finally judge all criminals and to determine the penalties that shall be meted out to them. For this will only be your war if the final victory brings you justice and a true and everlasting people's peace.